We've arrived to the start, for us at least, of our Paru Bay Recon. This is probably the most famous part of it, isn't it? The forest of Arenberg. And when you get here, you're reminded very quickly of how mental it is that they arrive on this section at 60 k's an hour. Yeah, and it's, down, it's sort of downhill as well. They hit this in the race, it, nearly 40 miles an hour, 60 k an hour. And it's actually quite narrow. I thought it's gonna be a little bit wide. You've got the path on the side, which of course they can't ride on. And there it is, heads into distance, two and a half kilometers. We can though. We can indeed, can't we? But we can't. Can we? Uh, this was a sector actually that was discovered by Jean Stablinski himself, a very good cyclist, world champion no less, um, but also an ex-miner, so he knew these roads very well. And when was it introduced? 1968. Yeah, but this has been almost the end of a few riders' careers, and you can see why. Indeed. Right, should we crack on? I've got about 95 k's to do to the Roubaix Velodrome. You've got food and your bidons full and that. I'm going to take a run up. Yeah. Not to 60 k's an hour, but no. probably about 20. Yeah, a little bit of a trundle. More of a trundle up. Less, less 60 k's an hour and more 20. Ooh. Oh, crumbs! <laughs> oh, look at my neck. Ba bum, ba bum, ba bum. Punch up! Yep. Well, running 28 mil tyres, only about 55 psi, just shows the brutality of these cobbles. I've got a flat only three, four hundred metres in. There you go. No wonder so many riders punch you. Absolutely treacherous. Round two, Arenberg. He's lost his bottle. It's that Punch it. He's lost his bottle. I can't even begin to describe how sketchy this road is. <sighs> Completely forgotten. It's been quite a few years since I was out here. Never actually raced Paru Bay. But I did do the wreck on ride with a couple of teams. I cannot imagine coming onto this at the speed they do. I just couldn't do it. That's that. I don't know what to say. I kind of know how bad Allenberg Forest is in my head, but it was still worse than I was expecting. He's cheating, look. Oh, he's punctured again. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Is that why your bottle oh, yeah. came out? Uh, he's yeah. just not as smooth on cobbles as me, that's the... No, I don't know what it was. I had like 55 in the front, but... God, those, that midsection though, Dan. That was unbelievable, wasn't it? Well, Dan... Just at the same time as I punctured, my bottle pinged off, so Dan's been kind enough to go back and get it. 55 PSI, that's all it needs. Right, this big main road that comes straight after the Arenberg is a very brief bit of respite for the riders in the race. Quite often they're just kind of trying to find out what's happened in the race behind them if they've managed to stay in the front. But from this point onwards, the sector's come thick and fast. And actually shortly, just before Valair, we'll be taking a right-hand turn for our second section. We're about an hour in now, we've done three Ks. This next sector, 1.6 kilometers in length and thankfully, although still pretty bumpy, nowhere near as gnarly as the forest of Arenberg, giving us a little bit of a break. It is, yeah, just outside of our lair, but you're right, it's just so much smoother on here. Yeah. That Arenberg really took my breath away. I know, it took my tyres away now as well. Have <laughs> yeah. a bottle. Took the breath out of your tyres. It took it? everything away from me. See, in sectors like this, where you can actually Go on the side of the road, whereas on the Arenberg, of course, that path on the side is completely blocked off. But here, if you want to, I'm on a drain. Go in the gutter. Just got to be careful getting back onto the road. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just going to stay on here, Dan.
Between the cobbled sectors on the Tarmac Road, you sometimes get a look into history, really. Uh, here, where the road is broken away, you can see the cobbles underneath. Now, after World War II, local authorities started pouring tarmac over a lot of the cobbled sectors. And far from trying to encourage the race, local towns and villages were actually trying to deter it because they saw the publicity garnered from the rise using these hellish roads as a bit of an embarrassment. Yeah, and if it wasn't for Les Amis de Paris-Roubaix, who came along in 1977, a volunteer group who basically kept the cobbles, they maintain the cobbles, and still do to this very day. And in fact, if it wasn't for their very hard work, we probably wouldn't have the same iconic sectors that we do now. I'll tell you what, in my own head, because there's those three five-star sectors, I kind of think that the others are going to be quite easy. That was quite technical, that one, wasn't it? There was, there was a lot of like adverse, adverse bends and particularly rotted sections of cobbles on corners that can suddenly change your line and throw you out. You've got to be so switched on, especially coupled with the fact it's just started to rain and those last couple of sectors were wet. Super technical, super stressful, but still weirdly, a lot of fun. Yeah. Hey, yeah, right here. Here we are in Tilloy to saint saint It's sector 15 and it's 2.4K. It's wet, it's slippy. There's more cobbles on the menu. Is that the corner where Lars back did a lotto rollover? Tell you what, since it's so slippery, I'm really nervous of being too close to the back wheel of Matt because I like to go to pick my own line. Or well, at least that's my excuse for getting dropped. Oh. Done about 25 k's and my arms are killing me. My biceps particularly, or what I have here where most people do have biceps. I thought, that were your, I thought that was your beer lifting arm. I thought that would have served you in good stead. For no, it's problems. really hurting. Bit of motor pacing now. Just to bring our condition on a little bit, up the average speed. We're not really cheating, we're just going faster. This is sector 14, uh, Burry La Forêt to Orchy, and it's 1.4 kilometers in length. And Dan has a little history lesson for you. Well, yeah, I was just thinking it's quite amazing, given how big this race is now, that when it was originally proposed, it was proposed as a warm up race for an even greater test of endurance called Bordeaux to Paris, which is 550 kilometers. Uh, but the first organizers, it took place on 1896 on Easter Sunday. They were Theodore Vienne and Maurice Perez, textile manufacturers from Roubaix itself. And probably no coincidence that they were also behind the building of the first velodrome in Roubaix. Not the one that they use to finish on today, but a tradition was born that day nonetheless. Thanks for that, Dan. That was great. I'm learning and getting tired. Yeah, my arms are still hurting. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're here on the mont jean pével sector, sector 11, and one of three five-star sectors, three kilometers in length, and just look at the state of that mud. Yeah, no, we haven't had a rainy Paris Bay for many, many years, but it doesn't actually need to rain on the day for you to get very wet and muddy, does it? No. Last night we had torrential rain, in fact, up until about five o'clock this morning. You can see how much of the mud from the fields has swept onto the cobbled corner here, which would be absolutely treacherous in a race, wouldn't it? It's super slippy. I mean, yeah, you can, you can feel just down there. I mean, there's a lot of, it's, the cobbles are very, very hard down there, but actually covered in a real thick slime and also there's a lot of grass on it. So uh, it actually, the damp, there's like, like a dampening effect with yeah. the mud and the grass on that particular section. But this, this bit here, well, this is far more rugged. Cobbles are hard down there. They are. As opposed to the soft ones we've been over so far. 
This is sector 10, mercifully short at only 700 meters, Merigny de Avalin. And I think we can nearly see the end down, thankfully. It can't be thick and fast, doesn't it, at this point in the race? There's a right crown on this one, though, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I'm going to get on the crown. You get, on the, get on the crown. A bit of a camera back there. We're fully crowned up. 41 k's to Roubaix. 41 k's to Roubaix. Woo -hoo. Well, I don't think we'll be doing this section today, Matt, because we have stumbled across the Zami de Paris-Roubaix that we mentioned earlier, the friends of Paris-Roubaix, 40 of them on this sector, and they're going to be spending all week making sure that it's fit for the race. It's pretty impressive. They're all volunteers, mind you. Really, really impressive. A real spirit about them. I mean, without these people, the race just couldn't go on. The roads would be literally unrideable. Oh, look at the change of... Bloody hell, this is quite rough, Dan. Short, but rough. Bloody hell. This 500 is... metres, this it's is... It's a swell sketching. <laughs> Sector eight. I'd say it's short and sweet, but it's short and ever so muddy. It's short, muddy, and pretty sketchy. Get a, lot of, get a bit sideways on that. That's that one. Buff, there we go. Oh, that was, oh, that was all done. Yeah. On to the next. Oh, no, I've had a puncher. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Sorry, I'm starting to crack. <laughs> Thinking I punctured, but it's just my legs that are punctured. Well, it's turned from rain into what feels like the first day of spring, which couldn't be more contrasting to what we found in Flanders yesterday. Next up, Saison to Borgel, 1.3 k's. This is Sector. Number seven. It is. Now, we often refer to Paris-Roubaix as l'enfer du Nord, which means the hell of the north. And it's easy to assume that's simply because of the cobblestones that the riders have to go over. However, that is not exactly the case. Uh, they took a break during World War I for this race. And when they resumed after the war, they did a recon of the route. Such was the stench and the decimation when they reached the north part of France that they referred to it as the hell of the north. Although today, it's actually quite pretty. Yeah, doesn't smell either. It's not smelly either. As you can tell by Dan getting out of the saddle and me changing down a few cogs, this is one of the few climbs in Paraguay. It's basically a bridge. You joke, Matt. But the fact that the rest of it is so flat means that this little climb really saps your legs. It's actually it? pretty brutal, really. 20k to go. 20k. Vingt. Vingt. Va. Vingt kilometres. À la Here we go. We are. Coming to the back end, thankfully. We've already been bone jarred and vibrated with an inch of our lives back there. But this is the iconic Carrefour de l'Arbre. It's the third and final of the five star sectors. Only three more sectors before the Roubaix Velodrome. And Dan, I'm glad this one's nearly over, mate. Yeah, uh, we're about halfway through it now, aren't we? And just like Arenberg at the start of this video, despite the fact that we filmed on here a lot, you just forget how terrible it is. Doesn't get any easier. the speed we're going now, because we're slightly fatigued, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, I'm going on the side. Oh, that's better. Oh, you see, he's up there. I'm on the crown now. Oh. Right, we had a nice bit of respite after the car afford alarm of about 30 metres. Yeah, uh, before we hit this sector three. I know, it's quite bumpy. It's a bit more evenly bumpy. This is, yeah, sector three, as Dan said. 1.1 k's long, and it's called Grusson. This ride's actually given me time to sort of think and reflect back to what Cy and I were discussing when we were over in Grand Canary about what makes a bucket list ride. Uh, a lot of people in the comments below that particular GTN show were saying it had to be hard. And I'm not sure it necessarily does have to be really, really hard, but this is definitely a bucket list ride doing Paru Bay because it just gives you that sense of perspective when you watch it on TV afterwards. Yeah, I think 
as I say, you can ride it as hard or as easy as you want to, but, you know, riding over the pave at whatever speed will give you an impression of what it's like to ride it a lot quicker. Uh, it gives you a real insight into basically how brutal this race is. Hardly any elevation gain at all. All the rough stuff, all the effort is on these, on these clinkers. Now, of course, for us, it's quite easy to come across here either on the ferry or in the tunnel, but if you're a really true diehard cyclist, wherever you live in the world, I think you have to come over here once. You've got to. Take it off your list. Definitely, you? definitely. The penultimate sector, 1.4 k's from Willems to M, but really this is the proper final stretch of Pave because the last stretch, well, it's only a couple hundred meters yeah, long. Newly laid, isn't it? Yeah, newly laid just before the velodrome. That's not going to split it. This one potentially could, but normally the race is done by now. 5Ks to go. 5Ks. Only one more short token section, really, isn't it, Dan? Yeah. All the pave is now behind us. And it's just the glory of the velodrome that waits. Yeah. Can't believe they haven't closed the road for us. I know, I'm a bit surprised, disappointed, actually. This is what the last little drag before the drop down into Roubaix. You often see a few last ditch attempts to get away before the group comes into the velodrome. Unless, of course, you're Tom Bowden off having Cancellara and you're about two minutes up. Yeah, you taxed 50 k to go. Last sector is just here in the centre of the road. It's only 300 metres long, so the riders divert onto it, but we're very close now to the velodrome. And to be perfectly honest, I've had enough of cobbles for the day, so I'm going to stick to the pavement road. I think I agree, Dan. I've got a cobbled-based headache now, you know. You had me there, fair and square. I just well, admit it. I, I just used the banking, mate. That's all. You, you went, you went in a bit. Uh, you went in a bit hot. I thought you yeah. used up a lot of watts coming into that corner. But anyway, you're a top class banker. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> that was a hell of a ride, though, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Now I'm sat here, finished it. I must yeah. admit, I'm quite hungry and particularly thirsty. What was the hardest bit for you? Uh, hardest sector. Well, just straight off the Arenberg Forest just caught me by surprise, yeah. despite. The knowledge of how bad it is, I just, I couldn't believe it when I was riding along it. And then when you get to Carrefour de Lab and you've got 70 k's in the legs or 75, that hits you pretty hard as well, doesn't it? It certainly does. I really found it hard to put the watts down. And uh, but yeah, no more punches apart from uh, my two. Yeah, on, uh, got the bad luck out of the way. Forest The but great yeah. thing about this ride is that in general you can come and do what the pros do and finish right here yep. on the outdoor Roubaix Gates Velodrome, open. which is very cool indeed. I mean, how many other sporting stadiums? in the world, in different sports, can you do that on? Not many, are there? No, there isn't. It's absolutely amazing. I feel a bit emotional, Dan. <laughs> uh, right, well, that brings us to the end of this video, but if you would like to see the stark contrast that is Grand Canaria, uh, we did a bucket list ride over there as well, and you can find that just down here. No cobbles in that one, is there? No. no. There's a lot of sunshine and no cobbles. Mm.